move confidently to outstretch the parameters of how you should see yourself so that you can reframe your life for lacking on capital 100.4 fm tune into the life changing radio capital 100.4 fm As we said earlier, as we're celebrating Women's Month, we're also going to be talking about how um, addiction also does not look the same in men and women. We've highlighted over the weeks how even our bodies physiologically process drugs differently. Remember, we said women are said to metabolize drugs and alcohol differently, and our bodies also dispose of the drugs differently in comparison to how men do. It's also been said that once a woman takes, starts taking drugs, she's more likely to become more quickly addicted than men. Well, today we want to continue the discussion and we get to meet women who have experiences and stories to share with us as far as addiction is concerned. The issue of gender and substance misuse has various and several issues. They are, however, not at the top of our minds, especially with Women's International Month coming. And that's why this particular show intends to continue digging up the answers towards the importance of gender-sensitive approaches to prevention, treatment, rehabilitation, and recovery in women. Addiction is generally discovered much later in women than it is in men. We said last week women face twice the stigmatization and gender barriers in accessing services. Addiction and substance abuse can also act both cause and effect, effect in increasing the connection between substance abuse and gender-based violence. In other words, the aggressor, person who's using, um, who, who becomes aggressive or physically violent, can actually become more violent under the use of drugs. While the survivor of this gender-based violence can actually then turn to substance use or misuse to try and cope with the trauma. Women who use drugs are five times more likely to have experienced violence than any other women, especially those who do not use drugs. So when it comes to talking about gender within substance misuse, the truth of the matter is women and girls are affected by gender-based violence, especially if they're living in homelessness situations, they are pregnant or even have children. Those women who are sex workers, those in the criminal justice system. And the truth of the matter is substance misuse was mainly considered a male issue as we said last week, research focused solely on men discussing sustainable approaches to drug policy. But this cannot be done without looking at the issue of gender. In the past, we found that preventative methods always were generic. In other words, they didn't consider gender, although most of their studies were based on men. <laughs> Only by the 90s did it start to become very clear that there is indeed reason for us to think about substance abuse as far as men and women is concerned, to think about it differently. If you remember last week, we also highlighted that women who take cocaine are more likely to develop heart and blood vessel 
problems in comparison to men. Women who use cocaine are more likely to experience an increase of energy and thus also a decrease in exhaustion that may be related to work, child taking child care, looking after the home, and any other family responsibilities. For other women, they take cocaine to try and lose weight. And when it comes to methamphetamine, research is suggesting that women who take um, this particular uh, drug class will probably suffer from recurring depression. So how are we, is the question we've been asking as Zimbabwe, responding in a gender sensitive approach as far as treatment, rehabilitation, recovery is concerned? Is this being incorporated in our national debates around our drug policy, the policy themselves, and even our health statistics? And joining this discussion today, boy oh boy, do I have stories for you, but first, I want you to meet Thelma. Thelma is a 29-year-old mother of one. She has struggled with polysubstance abuse for years. In other words, she's used different kinds of substances. substances. Professionally, Thelma is a beauty therapist. She's also found a new love in poetry Coming from a dance or music background, she's now using poetry in a different light. Back on her dancing and singing days, she was known as versatile. But now she's leading a new light. Thelma, good morning and welcome to Cafe Talk. We're so excited to have you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you so much for having me here as well. So, Thelma, we want to walk a mile in your shoes. Um, talk to us, firstly, what was your childhood like? Uh, like I always, I always tell people, my childhood was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I was not, um, I was not introduced to drugs, or I didn't see anyone doing drugs in my childhood. Mm -hmm. I grew up with my grandmother. Then at some point I went to England to be with my mom. Then I came back after my O level. Then I lived with my grandmother again. That's when it all started. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What happened? Oh, uh, my one. My one. My one. My one. So, okay, do you remember the first time that you got exposed to drugs and actually tried it? I think I was. I was late teens, late maybe teens. 18, mm -hmm. 17, 18. I started with weed. Right. Yeah. Wakai wane pi and different good in the boy, I got by weed. Wakai wane. No, it definitely wasn't. Uh -huh. I'm sure she did not know what it is. Mm. She died not knowing. Um, yeah, yeah, my friend. Mm. And I loved music so much and I was into music so much. And, um, I, I really don't remember. This is, this is like eight years ago. Yeah. I don't remember, uh, but yeah, I think in the studios, in the studios. Yeah. Plus, I stayed in Chi Town, mm -hmm. my ghetto areas, and everybody was doing it. Yeah. Yeah, from what you can that's remember. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah. 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 Just so that we can be both intoxicated the same way. Fernando mm. Faye, I think deep down we know it. It's a mm -hmm. We don't want to be high or drunk alone. So yeah. we would ditch here. Yeah. So here. so did you feel pressured? Because you know when we talk about peer pressure. Yeah. But sometimes peer pressure is subtle, right? It's yeah. Yeah. your friend saying, Oh, try this drink. The same way of like, hey, I think these shoes look nice on you, right? And then yeah. you try it. Is that the same thing? Yeah, you're so right. Peer pressure does not present itself as peer pressure. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't, you're not peer pressured knowing that this is happening. I'm being peer pressured. It starts just like that, just like what you said. But, uh, you know, this is nice. You should try it. Mm -hmm. Everyone is doing it. Come on. I'm sure it's nice. You don't want, don't you want to feel it? Yeah. But for me, I don't think it was peer pressure. 
came from that gym. That's <laughs> you. That's <laughs> you. We are doing. Now I'm trying to listen. Yes, but uh, I'm someone who who loves trying new things. You know, getting to know new things. I just wanted to know the feeling. So you know, you can't tell me the feeling. I want to feel the feeling so that it makes sense to me. Mm. So I think I I tried it knowingly. I just wanted to try it. Yeah, it was like that. That's how I, I started. Right. Saka, why, why is You they say it gives you wind. You see, the things, the things with drugs and alcohol, right? Mm -hmm. It's so nice. That's why people are addicted to it. And that's why people don't like to let it go. To be honest, it makes you feel good. And especially for an artist like me, you start thinking more. You've got so much to say. Yeah, it's hey. just like you see the world in a different light. Right. The colors, it's not green until you smoke. It's just really green. Mm. And you're just so excited and you, you can't believe it. Like, how come I was not doing this? Yeah. You know, it was like that to me. Very euphoric. I, it felt great. Mm -hmm. But now that I've learned and I know what's happening. Yeah. yeah. So this is marijuana. Yes. How did you move from marijuana to what was the next stage of your drug addiction? Uh, I had a friend of mine who lived three houses away from mine. Muskana, I can see why you don't have a friend. So, I can see why she had sisters, but the sisters moved out. Mm. They just left the house for her. So, she would go to Botswana and buy. It's just like, um, what you call it, Tumba. Okay. It's the same thing as Tumba. But it's just in the some other country as well. Mm -hmm. So she would buy in bulk. I should just like it up Yeah, of course. It's what I'm thinking. But you know, if it's what it is in the ghetto area, if you're making money, it does not matter how you're making it. As long as you mm. that's how it is. So she she introduced well, she didn't really introduce me to alcohol but I was already drinking, but not the way I was drinking, mind you, with her because it was always there. Right. And uh it felt good. And Mind you, I was, I was in school. Mm -hmm. That's when I was doing my beauty therapy. And I always say it's by the grace of God that I passed. Can't believe it. Mm. Still my last. Mm. I always ask God, if I have a problem, I was trying to say this. Mm. <laughs> you know, uh, I would skip school for like a weeks. I would skip school. I would go Where out. be? Every single day, I would go out in a uniform. Then I would remove it. Go to my uniform back when I'm going home, so my grandmother really never knew what had happened. I Like I had, you know, hay fever, so my eyes are always itchy. So you can't tell. Yeah, you just think it's an egg. You know, because my her eyes hurt. So she, but because when you smoke weed, your eyes turn really red, like. Unhealthy red. Mm. Yeah, so she never really knew what was going on. But then after alcohol, like I said, mm -hmm. a friend of mine came one day, the guy, and he's like, Oh, I have a crystal meth. Man, you gotta try this. Mm. And I didn't even know what he was. I just knew she was like he said it's crystal meth. I never heard of crystal meth before. Right. And he said it's a drug. Okay, cool. I didn't know the symptoms of crystal meth and mm. what it does to you, you know. So um I did try it. And it was a different feeling from from weed, mm. completely altogether. Mm. Just makes you so energetic, and you feel so happy, and you feel like you can, you can, you can lift the whole world in your hands. And, and it was really good, and I just couldn't believe I got that thing. I went straight to my uncle. Said, Yo, you need to try this. To your uncle Futi. Yes. Uncle Fachikaranga Variana. My yes, the Kuruangu, my mom's younger brother. Ah. My yes. Yeah, but my my mom always think Futi. It's my uncle who introduced me to crystal meth, which you know became the the. The, the death sentence to my life and my uncle's life, mm. but uh, it was vice versa. I'm the one who introduced oh, it to him. And I said, you know, you need to try this because my uncle is, you know, he's he I know Shandani like he does everything mm. with his hands. So I was like, you need this, you know, mm -hmm. to do your work and stuff. So that's how we started with crystal meth. Then I graduated to ecstasy. Yes, uh, <laughs> Uh, a friend of mine, also an artist, mm -hmm. sells Molly. It's called Molly or Estes. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, because he sells Molly, it's very expensive. Like one pill is very small. It used to cost 10 to $15. Mm -hmm. And it lasts maybe three, four hours. But then I was always high on crystal meth. It became my best friend. I didn't know, I don't know what, what Molly felt like. Because crystal meth kind of takes over. Mm. It takes over everything. 
but then yeah i, I became i started smoking I'm, i mean taking ecstasy as well so it became weed uh, ecstasy alcohol and crystal meth mm. cocaine up on album you know when someone in the studio has it just smoke it and go because it's very easy to do other drugs when you started doing something else but you just like well it's one in the same yeah so why so, not so uh, during the day or per day what was your intake like and because I thought I wanted to have a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a grade bit of a little 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 was causing me paranoia so much and I didn't want to use it anymore but mm -hmm. it's just that I had reached that point of uh, thinking that I can't function without it anymore mm -hmm. especially in the in the studio it helped me you know with my music and recording and mixing and mastering and singing mm -hmm. and I didn't I don't remember what I used to be before that so I just started taking it out of, out of necessity then uh, when I moved to crystal meth uh, I I did not have the craving for weed anymore, mm. or even alcohol. But I, alcohol was always that background. It's just like water. When you have food, you drink water. When you're hot, you drink water. Right. It was just there. But it, it's probably very dangerous as well, especially when you're smoking. Because the more you smoke, the alcohol you've been taking, it, it goes down. You feel like you, you're sober again. Mm. And you can, I, I could drink two crates, Yema Black Label, Mama. Put my pine down to my chip and my much more, but yeah, so very rare per day. What? But I just didn't. But I, I wouldn't get drunk because the more you're taking crystal meth, the more you feel like you're sober. So, uh, yeah, I'd go to school maybe come down to Kilongi and then Yanya, 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 I have to cover my. My steps. Yeah. I so, are you food. functioning all this time? Like, are you are you functional? Yeah. yeah, I'm definitely functioning. It takes uh, it takes time for addiction to start crushing you. Know? It it kind of like builds, it grows in you, uh, and it you know it just slowly becomes another thing that is staying inside you. It feels like you've got another person in your head, literally. Mm -hmm. And it takes time for that person to reveal itself and say, "Hey, I'm taking over." Right you start feeling you for at the st at the beginning you'll be feeling like you're in control and all the decisions you're making are, are your decisions yeah. they're not drug addiction yeah. and you're not an addict people are talking about the addiction you're just like no i can stop whenever i want but it's just that i don't want to stop did that conversation that happened with you yeah, the, there's a point where my brother i think uh the reason why why i where why i got help is my brother who who talks to me about it but I wasn't listening because I was listening because I wanted to listen. I still had a drug mindset. Mm -hmm. I, I, I just wanted him to get off my back. Yeah. And were you feeling like you were imprisoned by the addiction? Were you were you feeling like you can't help you yeah. have a drink and Yeah. I have to have that yellow capped Mauyu drink. Yeah. At least once a day. I think I've developed another <laughs> <own condition. laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, since we're being honest here and vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And I, I can't help myself. Do not just and drop to chat. I can't see him find us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. And after that, I feel functional. And then I'm not going to another day. Oh, my weird to a problem. Go. So were you feeling that way? Like were you feeling powerless and yeah. feeling like yeah. I have a problem, yeah. or you were okay? Yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> I I did start to feel that. Um, when you build tolerance and. I always say the tolerance builds you. You start feeling like you can't live without it. I, and I did. I, I couldn't live without it. I can't sweep without being high. What? I can't. Yeah, especially with weed. I, I just I just couldn't. I just couldn't wake up in the morning and take my and look at my duties angle. The sun does smoke. So I think I pulled it. So I think I can go eat it. I just didn't have the energy. And I remember telling um, my sobriety friends that. Um, when it was hectic, it was hectic to go to school because I, I, I was in <coughs> town learning in town and you have to, you know, board a bus all the way to town. You just didn't have that energy. I think that was one of the reasons why I couldn't go. And then 
if you smoke, man, you start feeling really paranoid. You just, you just can't go. You see, it, it doesn't help either way. You know, it, it starts okay. It lies to you that you're gonna be okay. Mm. You know, three months down the line. And remember, this is an addict for eight years. And three months down the line, you're okay. One year, yeah, it's still fun. Two years, and then you're just like, oh my god. Mm. You know, you can't, you can't go outside the road not thinking that people are watching you. People can tell you just like they can tell I'm high. And, you're just very mindful about things that you shouldn't be mindful about. You're mindful about your step, mm. your step. I mean, that's how you've been walking since you were born. How is it important now? Mm. You know, so it makes you more paranoid. And I end up not going to school because of that. Yeah. And uh, crystal meth, most definitely, it did uh, start to give me those um, feelings. Those feelings. Yeah. So I just want to bring Yadi, um, our social worker, into this discussion. I, um, and I, it's just unfortunate that, um, yeah. Yari, I, I want you to come in here. Mm -hmm. Because normally when we are looking at people who are struggling with addiction, mm -hmm. we always assume there's a heavy-handed backstory, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And listening to Thelma's story, mm -hmm. she sounds like she had a regular childhood. She sounds like... Did you, did you grow up feeling loved, Thelma? Yes. She I grew up feeling yeah. loved. Mm -hmm. Doesn't sound like she had a traumatic occurrence in her life. But here she was battling with substance use disorder for eight years. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking at someone like Thelma, what would you say were the risk factors there? Okay, uh, when it comes to addiction, we have to realize that uh, it's an equal opportunity. It doesn't matter you're from a poor background or a rich background. It doesn't matter you're more educated mm -hmm. or not. So we need to take note of the chances of a person getting addicted, the society the person is growing up in. Mm -hmm. And we mostly observe the character patterns of a child. Mm -hmm. Because you might think you're providing everything for a child, mm -hmm. but then you'll be missing something. You know, like nowadays, people are more focused on going to work, providing financially for their children. Mm -hmm. That means spending less time observing day-to-day -day life of your child. Mm -hmm. We are prioritizing providing for our, child, uh, for our children, but we are not providing enough emotional support and guidance. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to look at that, not just focus on financially supporting our children, mm -hmm. but rather pay more attention. Let's look at their mental health. Mm -hmm. What are they dealing with deep yeah. down? Yeah. If you can as a parent, recommend uh, probably once in a month mm -hmm. or two months, for your child to seek counseling, mm -hmm. guidance, mm -hmm. you know, social workers for this provide that, so that our children get groomed in a way that they recognize that, you know, now I need help. Mm -hmm. This is really affecting me. Yeah. So yeah, that's, that's what I think. Yeah. My mandipa, we did mandipa to you. I'm sure you're seeing your daughter. Mm. In Thelma, wh what do you think are some of the protective factors do you think there were protective factors that lacked in, in Thelma's setup or not that led her to eight years? Um, I think from what Thelma said, I can bring up the UK. Mm -hmm. And I can bring up the UK. And where's over in the Kuchi Chumbi? Nothing wrong with Kuchi Chumbi. Why are you in the UK? And you, I mean, everybody wants to go to the UK, really. Mm -hmm. yes. And then you come back from the UK and you come to Kuchi mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's a very different culture yeah. altogether. Mm -hmm. Depending on which I can't take it. Mm. Life Do you can be share with very us? different. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sh 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 okay, sure. Do you want to share with us why you came back from the UK? Uh, yeah. Um, it wasn't anything grand or bad. Uh, I didn't know any drugs or substance abuse. Yeah. Um, it was just my mom. It, it's my mom's way of getting you to know your family. Because I went to England when I was very young and I didn't know anyone. And most of my relatives are here. So my mom wanted me to get to know my grandmother and, and cousins. And mm. everything Did you face any culture shock in your, in your adjustment from, you know, where were you? Luton or something? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> I was in Birmingham. Birmingham. Yeah, I was in Birmingham. Uh, yeah, of course you do. I was young, you know. Yeah. Everything was different. Well, I actually tried. I tried to go to A level mm. here in Zim, and everything was so different. Yeah, it, I couldn't learn. I, I just didn't get it. 
and everyone's judging me. You know, it's kind of like, okay, so, so, so where yeah, are you going yeah. with this? So that, that, that's the culture that, <laughs> that, that just triggered more the beginning of yeah. things. And don't forget also Bobo, who probably has never lived in the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, she's she came probably drinking, you know. So it's it's also the generation gap between Bobo, the man of Murungu, one of Baku UK. It's it's difficult even for me to deal with my own daughter, Mandipa, who is in another world and I'm here to understand the culture differences. Yeah. So I can go go with this child. I think of Akarashika. Mm -hmm. She didn't realize things that would have picked up mm -hmm. if she had been a Zimbabwean child staying with her mother. Mm -hmm. So, you can ask to go and go to Even the, 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 I always encourage when I talk on radio, never 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 mm -hmm. yeah. that way you're able to see what you're going to do. You're going to do it. 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 You're going to but I think Gogo did not help that time. As long as Awe Arumpenyo, she was very happy. Mm. But there was more happening in Thomas' life than just coming home. Mm. And at what time? And with who? Yeah. Mm. yeah. However, I, I want you to come in here um, from um, also as somebody who sits on the national drug board. Chuck, Chuck, my keep hammering this because you know we have a drug master plan and we want to see it, what it means in practical terms. So when we are now designing messages, right? looking to the preventative aspects, the rehabilitation, the treatment, looking at someone like Thelma, what would that messaging look like? Because just saying say no to drugs probably might not work. Drug skill certainly will not work. What What is the sort of uh, thinking we should have around someone like Thelma who sounds like Mandipa, who sounds like me, who sounds like Nyari. She sounds very regular like like all of us. Yeah, um, this is a very interesting story and a very common one, actually. Um, <coughs> sounds like I'm crying. Yes, it does. The bad kind of, mm. The bad mm. kind of, mm. <laughs> no, um, So what, what we have here, what we actually need to address is more than the, uh, the drugs, is what's behind that. I know you spoke about being curious and wanting to know and to understand a lot of things. There's a reason why you're vulnerable to that curiosity. Um, just like my Mandipa, I was listening to what's, what's missing, what's not here. You spoke about um, growing up with grandma, then going to UK with mom, and then coming back with grandma. Where's dad now? It's not there. He's alive, but it's just not here. Yeah. yeah. So those is, are he, is he active in your life on any no. level? No. We tried it. No. Yeah. No. So, so these are the things that we look at and look at the impact of that absence. Okay? So whilst you may think, I'm just a curious person, there is something that you're trying to find. There's a void that you're trying to fill. Even if you don't feel like you have a void? Because I don't yeah. think she feels like she has a void. Mm -hmm. You won't feel, you won't necessarily feel like you have a void or you want to feel a void, but there's just something that you're just not yeah. at peace with. Is that for everybody? Because I don't think there's anybody who's absolutely at peace. I could do with more money. <laughs> I need Victor, <laughs> I need Victor to call me <laughs> with a new car. Yeah. You know, is any one of us in this room ever sitting with total peace? So this is what, this is what this is about, okay? Every single person here me included, mm -hmm. okay? We struggle with something, mm -hmm. all right? But it's about, do you understand what it is that you're struggling with and what are you doing about it and what are you doing with it, okay? okay. That's where your peace comes from. Okay, so in Thelma's case, what is she struggling with? Well, in your opinion. From, from, from just, just listening to this, there's a lot of absence from her parents, especially, because we don't want to be raised by grandparents. Grandparents spoil us. They just want muzukuru, muzukuru angu, that's it. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is that they didn't do for their children, they try to do for her. So in, essentially, she then gets spoiled instead of being Raised. supported, nurtured. challenged, nurtured, and all those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't help uh, Thelma to be 
a grounded as she needs to be. So when she then grows up, she's got a lot of gaps. I'm just sad because we're almost out of time, and this is very <laughs> profound. Mm. So again, the question does come back, though. How do we protect Thelma's? So um, she's not our typical. Absolutely, but they're all typical I in that you. manner. I get you. Um, when we look at the vulnerability, um, we are looking at the foundation, the cracks in the foundation, and looking at ways to fill those gaps mm -hmm. okay so what this takes what 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 this is taking us back to mm. is the i'm really sad that mental. i have to disrupt this because we have to go to the news uh, okay. but this was completely cycle. it's 11 o'clock i'm not it's, coming it's, back it's, it's <laughs>